Hello and welcome to the corn section of the Southern Illinois DeKalb Asgro Yield Chasers website. My name is Jessica Hurtis. If you don't know me, I'm a technical agronomist on the Southern Illinois team and I've been around for almost eight years and each of those years I've been able to be extremely involved in our Yield Chasers contest and celebrations. And so while I'm talking to you from my home office in front of a computer, um, you know, it, it's it's the best delivery we can do this year, but I am disappointed we aren't together um, with an external speaker, but um, I'm going to do my best to tie in some key messages from our corn contest, from the yield chasers, and some insights and management tips to help you think a little bit outside the box or just think where you can refine your current operation moving into 2021, even still, we've got time and beyond into 2022. So stay tuned and um, we're gonna go through some slides and I can't wait to share with you. This first slide really frames up our goal. The theme of this entire Yield Chasers is kind of that vintage theme. So if you can see, I found a, a nice uh, fancy coat, a vinyl, 100% on eBay, and um, you know, really tying it back to the theme of these aren't your grandpa's yields. Um, how far have we come a long way? So that picture really highlights uh, the, the year of 1933, 85 or 83 bushels. Um, and just think how far we come, the things we've done, the changes we've made, and the managements we've adjusted and you know learned and grown through our own trials and tribulations on the farm. So it's pretty cool to think that far back, but also how do we keep things going full steam ahead into the future to continue to grow and learn? The first section from the Yield Chasers contest I wanted to dive into were the top 10 products entered. Um, so there's a big range of products entered, but these are the top 10 by rank. Um, and you can see 6595 is that top volume product. Um, several familiar products across everyone's operation here in Southern Illinois. And what's really cool, um, you know, as an agronomist, products are near and dear to my heart. Um, but, you know, the placement, I'm not going to dive into that today. But what's really interesting as we think about continuing the genetic gain, and you know, a lot of times we hear from some academics and other speakers on the high yield um, challenge message is that you've got to be adopting new genetics. And what's pretty cool about this lineup is that there's no product older than a 2016 year launch class. So you know, that's a fairly new class. We've had a lot of rapid turnover. I can think, you know, back when I first started in the day of uh, 6297 specifically, it was hard to get away from it. But now we know and love 6253 is our lead. 112 and I definitely see that progression continue as I look at new products in our local plots we do a lot of them and we learn as we go so it's pretty cool just to see how the rankings of these top 10 fall in line with that that annual genetic gain as we continue to push for next uh, level yield uh, protection yield by planting date um, you know planting date is always a big driver in optimizing what acres we're prioritizing for top end yield and um, you know it was very resounding as you can see in this chart the number of entrants that planted in April um, we really broke that down by that date range and also by the average years of those entries so just because it's early doesn't mean that that's necessarily your guarantee on the highest yield it's a component of the system we know the earlier we plant the better chance we get for success um, but what's pretty interesting is that actual early May planting date was the highest ever yield at around 275 bushels per acre, um, 11 entries there. Um, and I think we can all agree that corn sat in the ground longer than it needed to, especially on the early side. So myself as an agronomist, I really you know, could talk until I'm blue in the face just about how important it is um, to make sure your early season conditions are right, you're optimizing the right soil temperature, the right conditions, and you're looking at that weather outlook because we don't want that corn to get a cold first drink, especially in those fluctuations in soil temp early on are much more extreme rather than waiting for a little bit warmer. So I always air a little bit closer to 55 degrees on my recommendations. Just again, it's the first chance we get to set that seed up for the most success. And you can see we had entries all the way um, through June. And I think we've been surprised in Southern Illinois just how good of corn we can plant even in a June planting date without switching to too short of a maturity. Next up, fungicide use. Um, you know, I, as you can see, 91% of our entrants did use a fungicide in the system, about half and half with the insecticide use. Um, but what's interesting with fungicide use is that it's readily adopted. Um, you know, I think we've seen the returns with our disease spectrums continuously changing and um, it's just becoming a standard practice as we think about even our prepaying activities. It's just you know part of the system and it's definitely driven a lot of value in our, in our uh, countryside. I will um, mention that not all fungicides are created the same. So I stole this from the Crop Protection Network. It's a great resource as you 
evaluate what fungicide product you'd like to use. There's a disease spectrum. We know there's wonderful plant health benefits, help with late season stalks and standability. But if you're thinking about a different mode or what the mode that you use today, what it's protecting against, there are differences. So I def definitely encourage everyone to understand what their uh, spectrum is in regards to the product you're investing in today. And then there's a couple of diseases I did want to talk about on this front. So I have gotten more calls on tar spot last year than I expected. So tar spot is absolutely in Southern Illinois. Um, Southern rust continues to show up and even further north in the territory than we once thought, you know, would typically be affected by it. So these can be, you know, pretty surprising pathogens as they come in late. Um, so we definitely want to make sure we're protecting the plant to prevent the, the infection. And we definitely got to be scouting and paying attention to our crop because there may have to be a rescue spray um, if the forecast does favor prolific tar spot or southern rust development. So again, scout and spray is very important in addition to that high yield system in protecting our plants. So as we get into nutrition applications, um, you know, over half of the respondents, which wasn't everyone in the entire contest, about 616, did indicate yes to some sort of in-crop application. So that could be through a side dress application, some sort of, you know, in furrow application treatment, things like that. So this is a pretty cool space. I think this is where people are seeing some pretty good responses and taking things to the next level, having those nutrients right there close to the crop in case we're root inhibited or that crop is at a, you know, key developmental stage where it needs a specific micro or just you know a base macronutrient um i think we're seeing some pretty cool um work done by your trusted advisor as a grower whether it's a retail partner or a dealer um there's some witches brews and concoctions out there that are really driving top end yields and if you're following you know the the high yield guys the corn warriors of the world the randy dowdies of the world they all have a special mix of more than just your your traditional np and k they're thinking outside the box and tying some micros tying some pgrs in there so again Think about that in a space where you might have some opportunity. Um, each of those mixes is pretty, you know, private to the person that kind of develops that. And so, again, I encourage you to reach out to someone, your trusted advisor, and, you know, get some insights on what you could maybe be doing. Um, but I did create a word cloud of those that did respond. So there was a lot of, you know, top dress urea used as a, a you know, later season application in corn. But you can see there's micros, boron, sulfur, um, you know, AMS, Y drop, different modes of application all fit into this. So if you're not exploring that and you feel like you're limited, this might be a great Great place to focus as you think about your yield chaser approach and just bringing up your bottom line in the year to come. All right, so um, here we are, um, kind of trying to tie a bow on the conversation. So if you've stuck with me this long, thank you. Um, I did want to kind of wrap up the conversation just by putting my farmer hat on, getting my bibs, and don't take this as a negative stereotype. If I were a true farmer, I'd be wearing bibs 24 seven. This is the luxury. Um, but I am gonna channel my inner Miss DeKalb or Southern Illinois Yield Chaser, or Mr. DeKalb or Mrs. DeKalb in my case specifically. So um, here I go, I'm gonna look off into the distance I'm going to hold up my uh, bucket of corn ears, my basket of corn ears, and really get into that mind state. How can I push my yields in 2021 and beyond? And so I'll get right into it here. So the first step, just to kind of reiterate some points from my uh, talk and some things I didn't talk about was regardless of what, what platform you're on, if you can't measure it, how do you control it? Um, and that's really the importance of using something like a climate field view. I'm a Bayer employee, so of course that's near and dear to my heart and several of my colleagues. But how do you control anything if you're not measuring, not evaluating, not doing uh, yield comparisons and really tracking the actions that you're taking on the farm? Um, it's, it gives you the opportunity to micromanage and that's how we're gonna bring up that bottom line across the farm. So a lot of support regardless of what digital platform you're on. A fast workhorse hybrid. So I didn't talk about this a lot, um, but products that have great defenses, our modern genetics are more than just top end yield potential. We've got great backgrounds, stress, heat and drought tolerance. Why do we like 6595? Why do we like 6357 so much? They're versatile. They have top end, but dang, if we, we hit a dry spell or have some heat, they're going to hold it together. And so I definitely want to focus on a fast workhorse hybrid on my farm to do all of those things that we don't know what we're going to have to deal with in Southern Illinois way over. So um, also the progression of new genetics. So my pick is 6794, which is a brand new product for this year. You know, hopefully by next year we get a little bit more supply to play with, but that's going to be my yield chaser corn as I think about the defenses needed and the top end I'm going to be chasing in Southern Illinois. 
do planting right. Um, we're short on time, so I can't spend a lot of time, you know, driving this point home. I said, I'll, I'll talk until I'm blue in the face that conditions outweigh the calendar date. Don't get too hung up just because your neighbor down the road is, is hammering down and planting some corn. Make sure your soil temps are, are consistent and warm. Push for 55 degrees at, at all possible. Um, we know it might be worth in some cases to get that bean planter out after the, the you know successes with early beans last year. They might be a little bit tougher on that germ front. We want a uniform, consistent stand in corn, and that definitely has to be driven through soil temperature and avoiding a cold first drink. Nutrition. So we talked a little bit about that. Myself, I'm going to focus on something in furrow plus a side dress application and more than just a nitrogen application. We know the benefits of some of those micros. So I'm going to talk to my dealer, my trusted advisor, and say, you know, hey, what's your best mix? How can we be aggressive and prevent this plant from having a single bad day throughout the growing season? I've got to control the controllable. Mother Nature, we can only pray we'll do her part. But um, this is the best approach that we think as we think about the, you know, setting ourselves up for success. And then finally, a fungicide application. So there's different data on different timings. Um, you know, we know baseline, we've got to have at least one application right around that tassel, um, you know, re reproductive stages. So depending on our disease spectrum, depending on what we're after, there could be some earlier diseases coming in that promotes an earlier application. But at the end of the day, I really want to just drive home, use a fungicide in the system, make sure it's close to that, that tasseling VT, um, you know, reproductive stage to protect that plant from key diseases that could come in and rob leaf tissue that's going to affect our grain fill and our grain weight and yield. So that's uh, my pursuit of Miss DeKalb or Mrs. DeKalb in, in my light. Um, you know, there's always something to learn. There's always folks doing something different. But if we don't try something new or look outside the box, how are we going to continue to get better? So hopefully this was fun, insightful, um, and, uh, you know, you can hopefully not screenshot me in this uh, Mr. DeKalb pose. So this is um, a view from 1942, the fifth annual DeKalb Corn Growers Contest. So we've come a long way, right? Let's tie it all together. Let's think about where we've been. I can't wait until we're back live in person where we can sit around some round tables, learn, um, grow, and celebrate the yield chaser successes. You guys do some amazing things in Southern Illinois. We have led the way as we think about progressiveness, um, and there's so much more we can do and continue to drive ROI, not only on our contest acres and also our uh, whole farm as a whole. So um, we thank you for your support. We love that you continue to support the contest test and, and find have a lot of fun in learning and growing with us so continue to reach out ask questions let us know how we can support you and um, I wish you all the best stay safe and have a great 2021 thanks for joining